is a 2024 Chevrolet Trax, the winner of numerous Best Car of 2024 awards. It's the second generation Trax and now serves as Chevy's, and therefore General Motors, new cheapest vehicle now that the Sonic, Spark, and Cruze are no longer in production. It starts at $20,400. Chevy has kindly loaned me this vehicle for a week, so let's see what all the buzz is about. In terms of look, Chevy did a great job translating the proportions and styling cues of the larger Blazer into this Trax platform. I think it's actually a great looking car. The only part I don't love about the exterior design is the back. It kind of feels like they ran out of money and just ended the car, especially with the incandescent brake light turn signal combinations. There's nothing bad about it, I just don't love it. Moving under the hood, all Traxes are powered by a 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder making 137 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque. Well, that might not sound like a lot of power, it's actually enough to move this vehicle effectively. This isn't a very large car. What I don't love is that it only averages 30 miles per gallon combined. There are no hybrid powertrains on offer in the Trax. The only hybrid that GM actually makes is the Corvette E-Ray. I would love to see a hybrid version of the Trax getting really good fuel economy, because that would make up for the lackluster power that this car makes. Where the Trax really shines is on the interior. It's both very quiet and comfortable in here and filled with a lot of good technology. There's an 11 inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, automatic climate controls, heated seats, a wireless charging pad, adaptive cruise control, a heated steering wheel, and a fully digital instrument cluster. The active trim level also gets these leather seats, which if they're faux leather, it's a really good imitation. They're eight-way power adjustable for the driver, manual for the passenger. There's also a leather wrap steering wheel, which is really nice, and these bright green accents all throughout the cabin. I'm not sure if I love those, but they're only on the active, so if you don't like them, you don't have to get this trim level. What's more is that I at six foot two fit behind my ideal driving position with plenty of knee room and when I sit upright, my head does not touch the roof. That's really impressive. This is definitely a roomier backseat than the Chevrolet Colorado, which is the most recent Chevrolet product I have been in. There is no inboard armrest, which is a little unfortunate, but you do get a USB-C charger and a regular USB charger and a single map pocket behind the passenger seat. Driving the 2024 Chevrolet Trax, and there is a reason that this car has won so many awards, and that's just because it is such a competent vehicle to drive. This cabin is so usable. There's automatic climate controls on this active trim level. I have my Apple CarPlay projected right now, which looks great on this 11-inch infotainment system. I have a fully digital instrument cluster that reads out my speed um, there digitally, which is uh, amazing. There is adaptive cruise control. I have heated seats and a heated steering wheel, which is really nice on a car like this. Beyond just the features of this car, it's also very competent in its driving dynamics. The suspension is very compliant, and it feels really well engineered. Uh, it does not feel like a base economy car driving down the road. It feels very composed. You obviously get bumps and stuff into the cabin, but Chevy did a great job making this car feel a lot more premium. I have driven the Buick Invista, which is the Buick version essentially of this small platform that Chevy has, and that one is a little floatier down the road, a little more Buick-y, um, but this that doesn't mean that the Trax is in any way uh, an uncomfortable vehicle. And it also handles pretty well too. I mean, you're not gonna be um, carving canyons in this car, but uh, for what you need to do going around these corners right now, the car does lean and the seats don't do a great job holding you in position. That is what I've noticed um, about this car the most is uh, <laughs> when you go around a corner, the car can corner faster than you can corner in the seats because uh, they'll kind of, you kind of fall out of them if you go around too fast, but uh, it's still a pretty dynamic car. That being said, the seats are very comfortable. Uh, the adjustable lumbar support is really appreciated um, on this Trax Active, and the eight-way power driver's seat is really comfortable, although I noticed the uh, passenger seat is noticeably less comfortable than the driver's seat. It also does not go up and down, so me at six foot two, my head is kind of brushing up against the ceiling when I sit in the passenger seat versus the driver's seat, which can be lowered and raised. This one is fixed. It does go forward and backwards and it can recline, um, but in terms of its elevation, it is fixed. So I did notice that that seat isn't quite as comfortable but I'd say the biggest letdown or the biggest detriment to this car's uh, driving dynamics is the power. You put your foot down and it has decent pickup, um, but the engine does uh, strain to accelerate the car down the road, which makes sense. Um, it only makes 132 horsepower. It's a 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder. So it's not going to be 
uh, a very fast vehicle, but the 162 pound-feet of torque is actually um, adequate to move this car um, down the road in an effective manner. You put your foot down, and you're not you're not going to be accelerating, you know, in a sports car manner. But it's it's enough, and it's definitely more thrust than you would anticipate from a car when you hear these horsepower and torque figures that the engine creates. Um, it's actually not as bad as uh, those would seem. More power would obviously be nice. I think really what you just notice is the engine um, groaning and straining to provide that power. Um, so long-term reliability on this engine obviously hasn't been tested. I can't say that it's bad, but the engine does definitely have to work hard to get this car up to speed, but it can get it up to speed promptly. And I noticed I took this car on a you know 400 mile road trip and on the interstate, you can get up and pass cars if you need to. It can comfortably cruise at 75, 80 miles an hour. You don't need to worry about that, that it's not that underpowered. And I wouldn't even call this car underpowered. Um, it's just something you do notice and it's really the only thing about the driving dynamics that isn't like near premium levels. The three cylinder is most definitely the most economy car element of this uh, vehicle. Everything else really does feel a lot more premium and I'm really impressed by it. Even like the steering wheel is very nice. It's soft touch, feels leather. These seats, if they're not real leather, it's a really good imitation leather. They feel pretty premium and most of the surfaces throughout are uh, pretty nice. I, I have noticed uh, the armrest where you put your elbow, your outboard elbow armrest. Uh, it's like, it's a rubbery plastic. It's not quite um, soft touch enough and um, not great feeling for your elbows, but the inboard armrest is a little softer and giving the car some gas here on this kind of windy road, you know, it it delivers everything you need. There's no drive modes in this car. You have a low mode for the gearbox if you need. Six-speed automatic that provides, um, the, it puts the engine in the right gear. I've had no issues with the transmission. Yeah, really all you know is kind of when you need to accelerate uh, like up a hill, the engine, the note of it, it's a low kind of growl, like a, a, not a growl, but um, it's not the best sounding engine nor is it supposed to be. But other than that, this car is super impressive to drive. I also love that this entry level Chevy vehicle, I can fit behind myself in the second row. There's plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom back there, and there's still 25.6 cubic feet of storage behind the second row. That's really a really healthy amount. This car offers so much value. Really the only thing it's, it, thing it's missing is all wheel drive. You have to step up to Trailblazer to get all wheel drive and that vehicle starts about $3,000 more uh, than Trax. And uh, you can, yes, you can't get all wheel drive on Trax. It's a bit of a bummer, but honestly, this car I think is really more meant to be replacing Spark, Sonic, and Cruise as Chevy's entry-level vehicle, and it does a really good job at doing that. This car is just so easy to get in and go. It makes driving and living with it a breeze. I wasn't, uh, in my road trip where we drove 400 miles, I wasn't too impressed with the highway MPG. We averaged about 29 miles per gallon, going mostly 75 miles per hour, so I think if you win 80, you might get a little less than that. Um, so that's not ideal. Uh, I really wish Chevy made a hybrid version of this. A hybrid Trax would be almost the perfect vehicle because then you would have this great vehicle, this great cabin, this great usability, the great design too. Um, and a hybrid powertrain might add a little more power, a little more instant torque, which acceleration is definitely where this car struggles the most. Uh, and then also, great fuel economy, because if I'm not going to have great power, I do want to have great fuel economy. Without great power comes great fuel economy. One would hope 30, 29, 30 MPG isn't incredible fuel economy for the subcompact crossover segment. Um, there, it's better than some of the competitors. Mazda CX-30 definitely doesn't get that good of fuel economy in real world use. Uh, but still, I, I would love to see a hybrid version of this because it would really fit this vehicle. GM just doesn't offer any hybrids other than the Corvette E-Ray, uh, which is really unfortunate. They went all in on electrification with the Bolt, which is just past me and going the other way, which is a great car. I love the Bolt and Bolt EUV. They're going away, but they're coming back. 
Um, but for people who aren't ready to go all electric, hybrids make a lot of sense. Same with plug-in hybrids. And it's a shame that Chevy kind of missed the mark on providing all of those options. Companies like Hyundai and Toyota are doing a better job providing all of those options, although Toyota's EVs are not great. Um, Hyundai's are pretty impressive. So, on it, yeah. <laughs> this isn't a video about Hyundai, but Hyundai, the Hyundai Motor Group, Hyundai Kia Genesis are, they're delivering the best products right now in terms of features and availability and uh, selection and design. They're killing it. Chevy killed it with the tracks. It is very deserving of all of the awards it won. And the only couple things that I wish it had uh, were a hybrid system and the availability to have all wheel drive, but I understand why they didn't. Keeps it simple, keeps it cheap. Same with the hybrid system, but yeah. Good job, Chevy. So that's the 2024 Chevrolet Trax. It offers so many features and a lot of quality for the price. And if it had a hybrid powertrain, it would be a near perfect subcompact crossover. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.